Hey, bye, Austin Ramos here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the Miami Dolphins third quarter of the season review. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. So in this video, I'm going to be going over the Dolphins' past four games, the ones against the Jets, the Packers, the Colts, and the Bills. So the Miami Dolphins are 4-4, four and four, looking to stay alive in this playoff hunt, and here comes the New York Jets with their rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold. So this... Coming off of the, the Houston Texans game, the Dolphins were just, I was baffled. So I can imagine the players on the team and this and that just really upset with what's going on. And the defense didn't do well. I wouldn't say the defense cost them the game, but I wouldn't say the offense won, put them in a good position either. I mean, you had a guy like Brock Osweiler couldn't throw a touchdown. You had to have Danny Amendola throw a touchdown. But nonetheless, let's continue on about the Jets game. So very high defensive game uh, with no team going over 14 points. Uh, the Dolphins ended up winning. They beat the Jets. The Jets had six and the Dolphins had 13. Very tight defensive game. And a lot of people when they watch football, they would love to see more football games like the Kansas City Chiefs versus the LA Rams. And trust me, that was one of the greatest football games I've ever seen in my life. But nothing like this because I just like seeing highly defensive games. So let's get into some stats. Sam Darnold threw 229 yards with four interceptions. So yeah, Sam Darnold spread it out the ball pretty well, but also to some Dolphin defenders. So we had Kiko Alonso for interception, TJ McDonald for interception, Wall Aikens with an interception, and Jerome Baker with an interception, pick six, pretty much to seal the game off and get the win for the Dolphins. And man oh man, was this a tight game. Dolphins were leading by six at some point. Then the Jets scored a field goal, so it was three to six. And then you have the Jerome Baker and uh pick six, and that puts the Dolphins up 13 to three. So you're up by 10 points. And then the Jets kick a field goal, but not enough to put them back in this game. Not much to take from this game besides a poor offense output, but since the defense was doing well uh, for the Dolphins, just like the Jets' defense was doing well, uh, just Dolphins' defense ended up helping them win this game because if not, it could have possibly been a tight game for all that we know. So then following that, the Dolphins head to the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field to play the Green Bay Packers, obviously, I already said that. Um, and unfortunately, they did not get this win. They lost 12-31. to And man, in the first half, it was such a great game. And you really thought Dolphins could have put it together. But I feel like what really killed the Dolphins was the first drive. When they were marching down the field, they had the big run up by Frank Gore, and then they were just getting close. And they got in the red zone, red zone finally. And then a snap goes over Brock Osweiler's head, and he's not able to recover it. Man, I mean, what a drive killer, what a game killer, what everything killer, honestly. Um, yeah, they ended up losing 12-31, to 31, uh, and you're never going to beat Aaron Rodgers if you're just kicking field goals unless you're kicking a field goal on every single drive. But that certainly won't be the case when you're playing Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers at home, for the very least. Unless you're Arizona and you somehow win <laughs> and you get Mike McCarthy fired. But... Let's stay on topic of the game. So, coming into this game, I thought really Aaron Rodgers was just going to show his dominance. And not that he didn't do good, but he, he threw for 199 yards and two touchdowns. But another Aaron came to play, and that was Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers, the running back. He ran all over the Dolphins' defense. He had 145 yards and two touchdowns. And man, oh man, like, <laughs> I did not expect that. Uh, just Wow. Wow, I mean, Dolphins had no answer for him, pretty much. He broke out that big run, and I feel like he would have scored on that run if he wouldn't have stopped looking back. He was just like, keep on looking back, seeing if the defender was about to catch him, but I feel like that really messed him up. But we didn't have that bad of an offensive outing. We just couldn't capitalize when we were in the red zone or just in field, good field position, and that really killed the Dolphins in this game. So now we're going to move over to the Colts game, which was after the bye. So Dolphins played the Packers, then went on bye, and then they go on the road to play the Indianapolis Colts. And surprise, surprise, Ryan Tannehill makes this comeback. 
Um, he's been out since week five against the Bengals with, uh, with something in his shoulder, capsule injury. And there's no real timetable for that type of injury. Like a lot of injuries, you know, you kind of have like a timetable, but that one's like one of those mysterious injuries that you don't know exactly when you come back. It can be, you can be gone for like two weeks. You can be gone for a year. You can be, your career could be over. Like it just depends on the case. Luckily in the Dolphins' favor, Ryan Tannehill was able to come back and he played pretty well. Dolphins ended up losing though, 24 to 27. This was one of the games that the Dolphins could have not afforded to lose and unfortunately they did. They played and the Colts, I mean, they were facing a red hot Colts team and it, <laughs> wow. And at some point in the game, the Dolphins had the Colts on the rope. They were up by 10 points and you, and, and you start thinking, wow, well, I mean, we're going to do this. We're going to beat the Colts. And then, you know, not that it's Cincinnati all over again because Cincinnati was just a whole different monster. I mean, the, the game just swung from Miami's favorite to the Bengals' favorite and like, like that in two seconds. But that wasn't the case. The Colts ended up just making a good comeback and winning the game. So I'm going to go over both teams' uh, like leaders uh, offensively and de uh, defensively. Ryan Tannehill had 204 yards with two, two touchdowns. And Frank Gore had 14 carries for 67 yards. So not a very good running game. And then also Leonte Crew had that monster of a catch uh, over one of the Colts' defensive players, defensive backs. He mossed him, and then he just ran into the end zone for a touchdown after that. It was 74 yards, but that was his only reception of the game. Now, Andrew Luck had an even better game. He had 343 yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions. Both of them going to Xavier Howard, and it was very funny because Xavier Howard got an interception. Then, uh, I believe, Tannehill, uh, next drive, threw, threw an interception or so, something happened. Um, and then, okay... So I remember what happened. Mike Gusecki caught the ball, fumbled it, Colts recovered. Next play for the Colts offense, Andrew Luck does another interception to Xavier Howard. Like, do these people not learn to not throw to Xavier Howard's side or something? But then Marlon Mack had 15 carries for 88 yards, of 85 yards for the Colts, and T.Y. Hilton had seven receptions for 125 yards. And it wasn't that T.Y. Hilton was dominating us. It was more that our pass rush was able, like the offensive line for the Colts was doing a good job keeping Andrew Luck protected for the most part. And they, he was just buying time and T.Y. Hilton was eventually getting open because cornerback's job is to have enough good coverage for the first couple seconds for the defensive uh, pass rush to, to get there. And Cameron Wake said it the best. Give me two, three seconds or so to get to a quarterback. Uh, that's on you. Anything else after that, that's on me. And it proved to be the case. The Dolphins just simply couldn't get Andrew Luck down or just put pressure on him and make him throw ill-advised throws that often. And it really cost the Dolphins in this win uh, for the Colts because, one, playoff uh, playoff seeding. Two, I mean, if Dolphins won this, they would be seven, uh, currently, right now sitting now, uh, they would be 7-5 and five and in the playoffs uh, if the playoffs ended today. Uh, depending on how they want to rank it with the uh, with the Ravens, but I think we have more AFC wins. So, just man, this was really tough for the Dolphins to really. This game really cost a lot, and I feel like this game, if it came down to it at the very end, will cost us possibly not making the playoffs. If we're in position to possibly make the playoffs, then last but not least, we have the Buffalo Bills game, where the Buffalo Bills came to Miami. Uh, first time we play the Bills so far this season, and they have this rookie uh, quarterback slash running back, honestly, because let's go over some of his stats. He threw for 231 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions, both to Xavier Howard. So that's, I think, three times this season so far that Xavier Howard has had uh, two interception games. He's currently leading the NFL with seven uh, interceptions, so make sure to pro, uh, vote him for the Pro Bowl. I mean, this guy, I mean, he's just doing great. Unfortunately, he got hurt on that second interception. They kind of, like, tackled him pretty low. First interception, they tackled him pretty low, too. So, I mean, it's very dirty by the Bills. And who else would it be than the Bills to play dirty? So what I was saying about Josh Allen is that he ran the ball nine times for, for 135 yards. I mean, we could not stop him running the ball. Really hurt the offense. 
And then they had Zay Jones had four receptions, uh, 67 yards, and two touchdowns. Then we had Ryan Tannehill didn't do so well offensively. He had 137 yards, uh, but he had three touchdowns and one interception. And then we have Kenyon Drake, who had seven carries for 31 yards. Not very good running game for the Dolphins. And it kind of shows that when we're not having a great running game, our offense just gets kicked off the field pretty much. And it really shows that the Dolphins need to have a good running game to be successful in just continuing the drives and getting down the field and putting themselves in position to score because honestly, the Dolphins could have scored a lot more points if given if they were running the ball just a little bit better just like this much better uh but once again it comes down to our offensive line and offensive line hasn't been doing so well this season with Kilgore and and sitting out I mean Ted Larson was just looking like a revolving door just letting people in the backfield all day and letting people just get pressure on Tannehill all day not sure if I mentioned this but Devontae Parker had four receptions for 43 yards and one touchdown and man oh man was that touchdown amazing just in between like three defenders Tannehill just threaded the needle and just got it in there for him and that was a really big touchdown honestly so that being said Dolphins ended up being two and two in the quarter third quarter of the season and ended up being six and six so far on the year with four games left they will play New England Patriots at home then they'll go up to Minnesota to play the Vikings then come back down to Miami to play the Jacksonville Jaguars and then go on the road for the last game of the season, week 17, to play the Buffalo Bills. And if this is happening again when we play the Buffalo Bills, I mean, and, and if we have to make the playoffs, it's going to be a very tough game for the Dolphins to win, quite honestly. But that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a nice thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a nice thumbs up. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content. Um, I've been doing these reviews. Been doing game picks with my cousin. And been doing uh, pre-game view, uh, reviews and, and post-game reviews. And just would like to bring out more and more content for you guys. So make sure to click that subscribe button. And click the bell notification option if you want to be notified every single time I upload from YouTube. And also follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I'm going to be posting whenever I'm posting a video. And on Twitter I'll be tweeting out some Dolphin stuff every now and then. And that's about it. And if you are coming from my article, pretty much very similar to what I'm going to be covering here. Uh, thanks for coming. And if you're coming from just from this video, go check out my article. It's pretty much the same thing, just in words. Um, but that's about all I, all I have for you guys today. Um, and let's go, Fins. Miami has a dog.